Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and another cook and today we're doing up this lovely rack of beef ribs from the meat merchant in Moira. Now, we've done beef ribs before, uh, I've done a video and I've cooked them countless times. Some were a success, some weren't a success. So we're going to try and do something a little bit different with these uh, once they're ready. But I'll get into that a little bit more once I get into the video. Uh, so we're going to get them seasoned up uh, with a couple of rubs here and get them onto the Kamado Joe to smoke. Um, Again, we're just doing them low and slow, uh, Kamado Joe set up, uh, running around 120, 130-ish. So we'll get the rub onto them and then we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do afterwards. So, there's a bit of a binder, there's not too much trimming to be done on these, they're actually quite clean. Um, the fat cap, there's been a little bit of stray fat there, we'll just take off. As for the rest of them, there seems to be a nice layer of fat over them, we're not going to do too much else to them. So, just a little tiny drizzle of oil, enough to help the rub stick to it. So we're going to layer up the rubs in this. First one going on is quite a fine mix, and that's the Smoky Carter uh, Pitmaster rub. Nice all-purpose rub, uh, goes well with almost anything. So, I'm going to dust. A nice layer of that over. These are really nice meaty beef ribs. Uh, great marbling through them as well, so they should turn out really good. So that's our first rub on. That's our fine base layer of flavors anyway. Next up then we're going with the Texas steak from Angus and Oink. So this is a much chunkier rub. Uh, so this is what's really going to help get us a bit of bark on the outside of these uh, once they hit the smoke uh, and using those two textures uh, that really complement each other. Both of these are quite savoury flavours. Um, this one especially, loads of salt, uh, garlic and pepper in there. So good traditional beef rib flavours. So again we'll just sprinkle a nice layer of that over the outside. Really nice coarse salt garlic in this as well, so should give us great flavours on the outside. Now I'm not doing the bones at the bottom, there's no point, there's nothing down there but uh, the membrane. I haven't removed the membrane because I like to leave it on there to hold the bones together. Because with any luck these should be nice and tender. So that's them um, ready to go on. There's nothing else that fancy to it, so I'm going to throw them on. We're using the ThermoQ Wi-Fi today to keep an eye on them. Nice long probe, we can get it right into the center there. And it's Wi-Fi so we can get it on my phone anywhere. I don't have to worry about connection issues. So uh, if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can have a look at it. And there's also links down there to my review of it whenever I first got it. So we'll throw these onto the Kamado Joe, uh, let them smoke, and then we'll come back and talk about how I like to get inspiration for cuts of meat that I've maybe cooked quite a few times and I'm getting a little bit bored of. Okay, so some of you might be saying, James, what is your issue with beef ribs? And the answer to that is nothing. I have no issue with beef ribs whatsoever. I have cooked them many times, but that is the reason why sometimes you need to change things up. So the first few times you cook something can be quite exciting. And usually the first time maybe you'll mess something up. So next time you're itching to get back at it again and try it again and improve things. Second time goes a little bit better. Third time, maybe you nail it, maybe you need an extra time. But then fourth, fifth, sixth time, it all gets a little bit the same. So beef ribs, you smoke them, get flavors on there, build up a nice bark, cut them open, they're super juicy and tender. Snap your Instagram pictures and you just eat the ribs. So that is nice, everybody enjoys it, but sometimes you just need a little bit more inspiration to maybe move on and try something else. So I want to show you my trick for doing this. So most of you are on Instagram, if you are, give me a follow. Um, I like to use something called Instagram Collections and it might be something that you're not entirely aware of on Instagram but it is super good for whenever you're looking for recipe ideas or things that do a little bit different. 
So if I share my screen here, you'll see we are going to use our good friend the Smoking Elk as an example here. Uh, so this is just brisket chili post. So if you're browsing through Instagram, scrolling your feed, and you come across something and you're like, oh, must remember and try and cook that sometime, or love the idea of that, it's maybe something you haven't seen before, chances of you finding that post again, or in two or three weeks time remembering who had posted it and what it was, are pretty slim. You could take a screenshot of it, but you're gonna lose it. So what I like to do is this little bookmark tab down just to the right of the like button. Now I'll give you a like while we're there, Elgie. Okay. Um, if you press and hold that, it brings up save to. So this is where you can create collections. So there's a little plus arrow here, you can add a new one. So say you're looking for, um, let's say chili inspiration. You can hit the plus button and not chili, chili, and hit done, and that adds that post to a new collection. So as you're scrolling through, if you come across a few other chili ones, or if you're browsing the chili hashtag, uh, you can add them all into that, and then they're saved in there for future. So for the likes of the beef ribs, uh, if I go into my profile here, you can access this stuff by clicking the three little lines up in the corner and you'll see where it says saved and you can see that little bookmark again. Click on that and this is all your um, this is all your saved collections. So you can make them, you can have random ones for random posts. Uh, and you see my food inspiration one here. So this has been building up for well over a year and if you click in, it's just posts that I have seen on Instagram over the years and it's either a technique I want to try or um, maybe it's something that I've been interested in at the time and I've added it into this. So for the likes of the beef ribs, I had the rack from the meat merchant. Anytime down there I always buy a rack but I was like I just don't want to cook or smoke another rack of beef ribs and be done with it. Uh, so I was looking for inspiration. I flicked on here and have a look through and it landed me on this guy's profile, Big Daddy Slims. Uh, he is from Northern Ireland, uh, Andrew McSparren. You can give him, I'll leave all his links below and go and give him a follow. Uh, he cooks some unreal food, uh, but tacos he has mastered. He has completed the tacos at the highest level. Uh, so that got me thinking, right, well, why can I not just smoke my beef ribs and then make tacos with them after it? So I got a lot of inspiration from Andrew. Again, check him out. I've never met him in person. And hopefully whenever it's a little bit less taboo to meet people in person, uh, we can meet up and cook sometime. Uh, but I highly recommend going and giving him a follow, even if it's just for a laugh with the story. So he's quite a funny guy. So that is how I use that collections um, feature. So there's stuff saved in here for everything. There's stuff saved in here that I'll maybe never try, but it's, tweaked my interest at one point and I've added it in there so whenever I come back to it or if I'm looking for something different to cook I can scroll back through this and think oh I wanted to try that so I can start researching it and look up different ways of doing things so uh, I'm not saying use this as a tool to copy people um, if you do copy something give them their credit uh, but it's just to get ideas from an inspiration so today we're going to use these beef ribs once they are ready and we're going to make them into tacos so I will uh, get set up again and we're going to show you how to make your own uh, tortillas and uh, all the ingredients we need to go into the tacos once the beef ribs are finished. We're going to make uh, sweet corn salsa to go along with this. So, pretty simple way, we've got the barbecue fired up, the ribs are on there, just come through their stalls, they're starting to climb quite nicely, so we can start getting everything else ready. Uh, so we're going to cook these wrapped in a little bit of foil. Uh, but we're going to do them with uh, butter first and then season them up with the uh, jalapeno and lime rub from Smokey Carter. Uh, wrap them up in foil, that's all going to cook into it, give you some pretty nice flavours in there. And then we'll add everything else in to make up the rest of the relish. Okay, so the beef ribs are nearly ready. Um, probe them for tenderness, one little bit still, a little bit to go, so I'm going to give it a few minutes. Uh, but we can prepare the dough for the uh, tortillas. Now, admission time. I usually use shop bought tortillas. I've only started making my own, so still trying to figure out the proper method. I don't have a press for them, so I've developed my own little janky way of making them work. But I've done them a few times and they turned out really well, so we're gonna give it a go on the channel. 
So 250 grams of plain flour with a good pinch of salt in there. Uh, next up I'm going to go in with around 4 tablespoons of oil. Just give that a quick work around with the fork. And then we're going in with our water. So I've roughly around 150 mils. Might not use it all, might use a little bit more. But I'll go ahead add in roughly a third of it first and fold the flour into it. Add another little bit in. Same again. You could go straight in with your hands, but first time I did this, I dove straight in with my hands and everything in the bowl ended up stuck around my hands. So I've tried it a few times with working it in with the fork first until it forms sort of a rough dough and then getting it with your hands at that point. So still need a little bit more water and start slowing down the amount to add in at this point. So I think we've got that to the point where we can work it with our hands now. I'm not going to add this last bit in just yet. But as you can maybe see, it's kind of a rough dough at the minute. It hasn't really formed together properly, but we're going to work it in the bowl uh, just to try and incorporate it all together. And then we'll see if we need to add that last little bit of water. But it's feeling okay at the minute. You don't want it too wet or too sticky, or they're a nightmare to roll out. So that feels pretty good. As you can see, you can handle it without it really sticking to your hands. Um, still nice and pliable. It's holding together well. If you poke your finger into it, it's not like springing back out. Um, kind of hard to explain what texture it should be, but. As long as you can handle it, you can poke it and it doesn't all spring back out. I think that's pretty good. So we don't really need to prove this, we are going to let it rest for a little while. Um, so I'll throw it into the bowl. Uh, I'm going to get the beef ribs lifted off and the sweet corn. And then we're ready to start getting everything together. I'll show you how to roll these out and how we're going to cook them. Okay, so beef ribs are off. We have switched the Kamado Joe set up a little bit. So I've took out all the deflectors and grates and I've put in my uh, cast iron griddles. Uh, so that's what we're gonna cook the tortillas on. If you don't have them, you can use a skillet or a, just a regular frying pan. Um, hopefully you've got a skillet by now. We use them quite a lot on the channel, so they're always handy to have. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do them out. Get yourself a set of scales and each tortilla should be roughly, and I say roughly, very roughly, uh, about 40 grams. 38 is fine, 42 is fine, somewhere around that. So roll it up into a little ball. And here's the magic trick. So I'm going to roll it out inside this. I've done them with flour and the rolling pin only and they were quite difficult to do. So place it in the centre. This is just a sandwich bag which we've opened out. You can use cling film if you want. This is a little bit more reusable. Uh, I know Andrew in his videos he uses them inside the press. I don't have a press so I'm going to make a press. So place it in the centre, flatten it down slightly, fold the bag over. Then take a cast iron pan or a pan of some description and flan it out. Now I have found this isn't enough to flatten them out all the way. You can't get the force in these to get them even but it gives you a much much better round shape uh, to them. If you don't care about them being round just use a rolling pin. Then keeping them in the bag start to roll it out, spin it a quarter turn at a time, and roll out 
towards the edges. Again, they're a bit rustic, they're not going to be perfectly round whenever you're doing them by hand like this, but I don't think it matters. They still taste good, and you want them really thin and as even as possible as well. I'll try not to have any thick bits because they cook quite fast, so you want them even all the way around. So you may see we've rolled that out that it's not quite the size of a large sandwich bag, but close enough, and it's a perfect size then to use as a a taco. So I'll oh get it out of the bag. If you carefully peel it one side off, and then I found it easiest then to stick it to the chopping board. It doesn't actually stick, but it lets you get your hand underneath and just peel the bag back and then it's quite easy just to grab it and lift it whenever you're ready then to throw it onto the cast iron to cook so I'll move you over to the barbecue we'll throw one on I'll show you what you're looking for um, and when to flip it uh, and then we'll get the rest of them made up and we're getting closer to taco time okay, so our cast iron is nice and hot you may see it smoking here um, we want to cook these pretty fast and allow them to puff up just take a rolled out taco place it on, any bumps you can smooth them out as best you can. As you'll see here after maybe 30 seconds or so a few bubbles have started to appear and it sort of looks like it's dried out a little. At that point flip it over and toast the other side. And once they're nicely toasted on both sides you can lift them off. So just place them into a bowl then with a tea towel in it, clean tea towel. Fold it over, keep them warm. And you can get on with making the rest of them and just add them to that each time. So I'll get the rest of them made up and then we'll have a look at the rest of the films for the tacos. Beef ribs are off and rested, all our tortillas are made, keep them warm under the towel. Uh, last thing I really do is to get the corn salsa put together. So I've gone ahead and took it off the cobs. Lovely colour, amazing smell, nice little kick of heat coming from that rub. Uh, I have diced up about half a red onion, which we're going to add in here. A little bit of tang will just go against the sweetness of that uh, sweet corn. Just add another little kick of heat. Lazy chilies. So didn't have fresh chilies, so always keep a jar of this in the cupboard. Um, this and the uh, lazy garlic, really handy to have just in case you're in a pinch. I'm gonna stick yeah, about half a teaspoon of that in there, just for another little level of heat. Okay, and lastly, not lastly, second from last, small handful of fresh coriander leaves. Just bring them in. Alright, last thing then is a bit of lime juice. Bit of acidity never goes amiss. Give everything a mix to coat it in that lime juice. Nice fresh uh, salsa to go into our tagos. Can do a tomato salsa, I've done it before. This one's just a little bit different. Um, Fancy a little bit of a change. Nice to try new things. So that's us ready to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to carve everything up, make up a couple of these, and then we'll have to give it a try. Tacos are all finished up, looking forward to these. 
Uh, what I'm with a bit, little bit of lettuce in the bottom. Some of that sweet corn salsa. Uh, again, there's a little kick of heat in there, so I smashed up uh, an avocado, a little bit of salt, pepper, lime juice over it. Keeps it nice and fresh. On with a couple of big slices of our beef ribs, and then a little bit of sour cream and hot sauce over the top. Two opposite ends of the scale, but they both balance each other out really well. Oh, look forward to trying these. I'm gathered up. I always pick foods on this channel that are an absolute mess to eat. Here it goes. Instant hit of lime first. Rich beefy flavour coming through on the ribs. Heat hasn't kicked in yet. Oh, that pops of sweet corn are amazing. Yeah, there's heat building there from that sauce and the jalapeno and lime rub. But definitely, the avocado I think is required. I know I'm not a huge fan of avocado, but I think it serves its purpose in something like this here because it really does mellow out the heat from the sweet corn salsa and the hot sauce. Of course you could go without hot sauce, but who wants to go without hot sauce? The tortillas work a treat as well. I was like a kid at Christmas when I first made them and they actually looked like tortillas. It's not stupid. I was well chuffed with myself. Mm. So good. So, let me know what you guys think. Is there something you are absolutely sick of cooking? Be it pulled pork, be it spatchcock chicken, doesn't matter. Have a scroll through Instagram, use them in collections. Try and think of different things to do with the same old cuts that you're always cooking. Try and keep it fresh. First time I've done beef rib tacos, 100% won't be the last. So I'll leave links below to Andrew's Instagram, go and check it out, uh, see how tacos are properly made, these don't quite stand up to his standards now but uh, check them out while you're there, I'll leave a link below for the recipe for this lot too and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up, if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.